Welcome to my Excel formulas power tip. In this tip, I'm going to show you how to generate the create table as SQL syntax using the Excel headers of a data sheet and also using the indirect and address function formulas method. So here's the data set and in this data set, we're going to be using the column headers to generate the create table uh, SQL syntax. And we're going to be pasting that into Oracle SQL developer to create the table, which will then have the same structure as this uh, Excel worksheet. So in order to do that, um, not only do we need to know the names of the headers, we also need to know the data types associated with those headers. So what I've done is I've added a, a new row, a blank row underneath the headers. And in this row, I've already created the, the data types and I've copied it uh, onto the clipboard. I'm just gonna paste it here into row two. And we'll have a look at the data types. So for all the date, uh, as you'd expect, it'll be date. And for the text columns, I've used bar char and it's variable up to 30 characters. And I've done that for all of the text columns apart from the product name, which has uh, more than 30 uh, characters. So I've used up to 100 characters for that. The other differences are for postal code, I've used integer. And for quantity, I've used integer. And for sales, uh, uh, decimal values and for sales and uh, money related values I've used the float data type. So the next thing we do is um, I've entered a table name which we're going to be using um, which will be created in Oracle SQL developer and I've called this uh, table orders product sales. So what we do is we add a formula like this create table and we're going to merge it with and combine it with cell S3. So it's dynamic in terms of uh, whatever we name we put into S3 uh, will appear in the first part of the SQL syntax. So next under the create table orders product sales, the first part of the uh, SQL syntax, we need to um, add an opening bracket. So we'll add an opening bracket there. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to list the names of the fields and also the data type associated with that field. So if we look at the first field, order date, we need to have order date. And then next to order date, we need the, the data type date. Uh, and there needs to be a space between, the, between those two um, items. So we do that first. Um, what I will need to do is, is go through how we can extract the the column headers and the data types and list it vertically. So bearing, that, bearing in mind we've got 16 columns, um, to get the sequence uh, from 1 to 16, what we can do is you can use the row function. You just do the row function as is like this. What that does is in the cell that you've pasted the row function, it'll just gives you the current row number. And bearing in mind that the that we want it to start from 1 and it's generating 7. So when you Copy this down. It's called seven, eight, nine. So what we want to do is, in order for it to start from a one, we need to take off six. Depending upon where your row function is, if it's further up or further down, then you look at the number of rows uh, before the the row function, and then that's the number of rows you need to take off um, uh, after the row function uh, element. So one there, we copy it down. We have sixteen columns. Okay, so the next thing is uh, we need to get the address of the first column of the first row, the order date. Uh, so we need order date here. So the address column, the address will be A1, then B1, C1. So we do that by using the address function. So we do address and open the brackets. And what we need to do is we need to specify um, a row number and column number. So basically what the address function does is um, it creates a cell reference based on the row number and the column number you specify. So if I did one here, one, which is first row, first column, you should get A1. And it's an absolute reference format. Uh, but in order for it to be then dynamic, we need to make sure that the 
the column numbers uh, change. So in order to do that, uh, we need to use the um, formula which we've just generated here, the row minus six column. So if we a row number here, and so what happens is every time the row function is pasted onto the next row, and um, it would be one extra in terms of the number of the row. We just take off six. That will give it sequence number for one, two, sixteen. So yeah, that's correct. So that cell reference A one. So by copying it down, we have cell reference going all the way from the first column to C one. So to get the the row two address. The row address, uh, rows to address going from A2 to P2, which um, relates to the data types. We use the same formula technique, but this time uh, we specify the row number to be 2. So I just copy that there, and we'll just change the, the row number to 2. And put it down. And now you've got the cell reference from A2 to P2, which is correct. Now, um, in order to use the create table syntax, uh, um, we don't need the cell reference. We can't use cell reference for the create table syntax. So we actually need to know the the, um, the contents of the cell reference. So that's where the indirect function comes in. So we'll put indirect. So you can actually put the entire formula in one line. So you can do address one. Six, which is the order date, which is correct. As we can see, order date is the first column in cell A1. And we do the same thing for uh, the data type, but this time we're going to be using uh, the second row, row 2. And that's date, which is correct. Copy all the way down. And now we've got uh, all of the, the row headers and the data type associated with that row header are listed vertically. So we can use the output for the field name and data type as the um, the next part of the SQL syntax. So that will be, be done by using this simple formula. Uh, where all we need to do is merge the field name and then we merge that with a space and the second one will be x2 which will be the data type so it's field name space and data type and oh sorry yes and we need to also add a comma at the end copy all the way down for 16 column headers um, alternatively, we can combine the output or all these formulas into one cell formula. Um, so I can show you, I've already got it copied here. Um, I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to paste it into this cell here. The first cell uh, of the, the data column headers and the data type of the SQL syntax. Um, in this case, I've also added a optional uh, space at the beginning. You don't need to do that. So uh, it's just to make it neater. So I'll take it, I'll take it off in this case. And that gives you the same result. I'll copy that down. You get exactly the same result. So you uh, the reason why I had these columns is just, um, just to show you the, the components of the formula. And you can also use this method to, as a helper column, or you can put everything in one go. Next thing we do is the very last column uh, for the column header. We don't need a uh, column. Uh, we don't need a, a comma, so we can take that off. And then we need a uh, closing bracket at the end. So the SQL syntax for the create table is now complete, um, which is highlighted in blue. So all we need to do is copy it. And I'm going to be pasting it into Oracle SQL Developer in this SQL worksheet here. And all you need to do is just press um, I run the statement. 
and the orders product sales table has been created. So ref uh, refresh all the tables. And you can see the table order product sales created and you've got all the, the column names and the data type uh, matching exactly the way the uh, everything was laid out in terms of the column headers of the Excel worksheet and the data types and how the Excel formula wanted the, everything to appear in the, um, the SQL software to create the table. And I'll just create a select statement. An empty table, there's nothing in there. I'll just do select to prove that the table is ready to take in data. Let's um, run. So yeah, there you go. Uh, there's the uh, table. Um, there's uh, no data in it, but the, the structure is there now to receive all the data. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon on the next one.